Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mind Body TV. I'm Dr. Kim Duramo. I'm going to share a really powerful topic today. It might be one of the most powerful ones I've shared before. It's also, I feel like I'm kind of going to go a little deeper into things today. So um, it would be a good idea to just sort of tune in, you know, like shut off other windows, shut off other things, be here fully, uh, maybe even like take some notes. Um, <laughs> Cause what, what I'm sort of experiencing this week and what I've, I've downloaded and what I've been practicing myself is so powerful. It's so life-changing. Um, I'm really excited to share this today in mind body TV, but it's not as, um, it, it, not that it's not light, but it's not, it's a little more substantial. So you might want to, you know, take some notes and you might want to make a little more space to like tune into this as opposed to just like a flyby. Cause I know, you know, we're broadcasting in the mind body community and Facebook and here we are on Instagram and it's a little like, Oh yeah, maybe I'll grab it for five minutes. And while I'm doing other things and while I'm waiting at a red light. So, um, so I pause for a minute before going into this topic. Um, but I, but I do want to share this and I'm really excited to share this. So, so stay tuned, but it might be a good idea to like make a little time to really tune in. So hello everyone who's here. Thank you for tuning in live. Where are you tuning in from? Um, here we are. Uh, where are you tuning in from? Let me just make sure that my thread is working here in the stream yard. <laughs> All right. So welcome. Um, so for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm a physician. I was previously trained in emergency medicine, trauma, critical care. Um, but I've always been really intuitive, really um, aware that everything is energy, really capable of, of reading people's energy, feeling people's energy, having awareness of what's really going on in the body that's causing the problems they're having versus the surface stuff that appears to be what's going on. Um, mm -hmm. And I've, I've really changed my whole medical practice solely to share about mind-body medicine, how the body heals itself, how the mind and body are connected, and how form, the physical, follows the substance, the inner, the consciousness. So as within, so without. And a lot of times we're putting a ton of energy into changing the form, making the body better, changing the diet. How do I heal myself? Um, you know, running around learning about solutions, but we don't actually know how do I change the substance, the stuff of which I am made? Who am I being? And that has a lot to do with our consciousness, our beliefs, um, whether we're living in the programs of, I got to keep doing more, I can't stop, or really dropping into the body and the true self. Um, I will share a little bit more because um, about what we're doing, because Jessica Sullivan just let me know, uh, one of the private clients she was working with, she's one of the mind body mentors who's doing private sessions. Um, she had struggled with severe, severe chronic fatigue syndrome, Lyme disease, autoimmune illness, um, and really was like on the deathbed, you know, and has really come full circle with that to she's completely healthy and functional. She's been mentoring with me for years and now she's sharing with other people. How do you evolve out of that? How do you change that? How do you let your body heal and activate that? And she said, one of the people she was working with was like, I didn't know Kim had online programs. I didn't know she had these offerings. So I thought, all right, let me <clears throat> not keep it a secret, right? So I don't want that to be hidden. I want people to really know about what we're doing. We have online programs and online courses. We have live mentorship and private individual coaching. There are tons of resources. And I think with what we're going into today, it's like you're, you have your own inner guru. We're going to let that come in. And if there are other resources that we have available, um, you know, drkimd.com is my site. We have been developing resources for many years now. So lots and lots to offer. All right. So Madrid, um, Seattle, uh, aren't you two hours early? Oh my gosh, I did it again. 
I am two hours early. I flew out east to visit my family. So of course my broadcast would now be one o'clock. Uh, that is just funny. Yep, it is two hours early. Thank you for pointing that out. So let's do what we've got here today. And I'll come in later on today <laughs> at one o'clock Eastern and let people know that I did the broadcast early. Thank you guys for being here. <laughs> Neva, it's all happening as it should. Scotland, Jersey, UK, Madrid, Pennsylvania, New York, <laughs> St. Simon Island, Georgia. Thanks, you guys. I, 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 the reason it's so funny is I did it the exact same thing last year. The first week I flew out here. It's not that hard to do. It's only two hours difference, but I didn't change the time in my head. And I did the same thing this time last year. So here we are. All right, the Netherlands, Chicago, <laughs> sunny Florida, Nottingham, England, Kentucky, Scotland, uh, Arizona. Okay. All right. So welcome. Here we are. Take a breath at whatever time it is for you. It's now. The time is now, and here we are in the now. So welcome. All right. So the topic I want to share today, how to heal 100% of your life. And the reason I've sort of prefaced this by saying like, shut off other things, take a moment, get tuned in, is because um, I want this to land for you in the space of a deeper listening Sometimes the ego is going to hear what I say and be like, what? What are you talking about? Do you mean this? You're trying to say that? You're trying to tell me that? Blah, blah, blah. And it can be a little, um, we, we bump new things out. If we get present and soften the body, get a little more here, we're more receptive. Doesn't mean we are um, just buying into everything. It means we can try it on, right? We can, hmm. Let me let that in and then feel out, is there truth here for me? Is there a nugget here for me? Is this true for me? Uh, we think that the protective personality is helping us, right? To like, no, that's not right. No, I've got to protect myself. Um, and that sometimes if we didn't have that, then we just buy into everything. But that's the big fat lie that kind of keeps feeding the ego and keeps it intact. It's not true. And you can let in new awareness, new understanding, you don't need to guard. And then just kind of let your system know what's true for me stays, what's not true falls away. So there's no threat to letting yourself receive new information, especially some of what I'm going to say might be really different to what you thought was the way you should be approaching things or what you thought was uh, reality. Okay. So how to heal 100% of your life. So whether it's your body, your health, uh, relationships and stuff going on, your general attitude or your life situations, whatever it is you're dealing with, right? Like work, money, other people, stuff going on. Oh, I'm just so busy. I always have to do everything. You know, kind of the thread of your life, what's coming up, what's getting your attention, what's taking the most of your energy, what you're dealing with that's not maybe as you would really like. And only you know what you're doing with that. And so most people are sort of um, letting it dictate who they are, how they are, and what they get to have. Letting life circumstances dictate or letting like, well, you know, you can't have it all. So let me just deal with what I've got. And they kind of march along that thread. So I want you to share with me like whatever it is coming up for you and you'll find it behind maybe complaint, like you kind of gripe about, oh, this thing again, or, oh, I have to keep going to work even though I really don't like this. Like what is it you're telling yourself? Um is not awesome, but you're actually, you don't know how to change it. You don't feel uh, you have the power to change. You don't feel like it's allowed to be changed. I can't change that. It's my family. Um, just the ideas that are in your head about what you're dealing with, what you're struggling with. Of course, if it's your health, it can be a lot of ideas about, about that. Like, 
I have this diagnosis, so therefore it means blah, blah, blah. So what is coming up in your life? Because there's sort of like four ways we hide from accessing our own power. And we want to call that out so you can claim this power back. Uh, 11, 11, Neva, Neva. <laughs> yes, I'm happy that you are two hours earlier. Thanks, Isabel. Maybe let's do that for the whole summer. It will be easier, but I don't actually want to do that. No, we'll keep our time. We'll honor our time. Okay, so what is coming up? I have health anxiety. Yeah, this is great because anxiety is almost like universal. I had a severe, severe anxiety disorder when I was younger and like panic attacks. And this was uh, decades ago. And the word anxiety didn't even exist. Like I, I couldn't tell anyone what was going on for me couldn't tell anyone. It was so scary and so unknown and so like wrong. What's wrong with me? And now it's almost like everybody has some anxiety and it's like, oh yeah, my anxiety. Oh yeah, my therapist. So um, it doesn't mean it's normal. It just means it's almost universal now in our society. We can change this. Finances chronic fatigue, limiting my work hours. Plus I missed three weeks due to COVID in May. I've tried to reduce my costs, but I'm just not making enough. Perfect. Good. Paola, how to move forward with my current reality. I can't get my own home or a new car. I keep creating bigger expenses. Okay. So you want to look at a few things we do mm -hmm, that have us stay in the powerlessness and not access our full power. And what I'm going to ask you to do here is actually really bold. And I want to um, qualify it after I say what I'm going to say, because it can sometimes land the wrong way. Uh, how to move past long COVID. Yep. I have agoraphobia, chronic dizziness. I don't trust my body. Good. Thank you. Anxiety of my health, kids, and my grandchildren. Awesome. Uh, I'm in limbo in all areas of my life. I feel like I'm on a roller coaster, both excited and worried at the same time. Yeah, those are very closely related energies. Mm -hmm. I feel so much force, masculine, need to fix it, tight, tension, can't let go energy. I'm having a hard time releasing this and just being present with it. Okay, awesome. We've got good stuff. Keep it coming in. So you want to first notice, and let me just lay it on the line, what I'm going to suggest. And I'm going to share my experience with this. So not just like throw it at you. But what would happen if I were to take 100% responsibility for everything happening in my experience? Before we go further, let that land. When we started the Embracing Health program last week, which was absolutely amazing, and everyone who joined was so unthinkably receptive and so ready to step into their actual power, I shared this. I shared, you know, if we're going to do this, you are 100% responsible for your outcome, and you're 100% responsible for everything in your life but I'm going to show you how to use that power to actually create what you do want. If we're still putting our power outside of ourselves, and I'll show you like the four ways we can catch ourselves in the act of that, you don't have that power. Your body's like, I can heal. I don't have what I need to do that because all the power is going, all the energy is going outside of me. If you are a manifester, if you are pure energy embodied. You are infinite intelligence embodied. You are infinite wisdom embodied that knows how to make the liver into a liver and the kidneys into a kidney and detoxify what you don't need and ingest and digest your food. Like why it can't just like, you know, reverse those cancer cells to quantum shift to become healthy cells. Why couldn't it uh, decrease the inflammation and create harmony in the body and resolve an autoimmune illness. Why not allow it to, because um, you are electromagnetic, you are constantly sending out a signal, allow amazing harmonious circumstances to come into your life, allow resolution, understanding, and connection in your relationships. If you are that powerful, 
Why is it not showing up? You got to claim that power back. So it's like life will happen and it will sort of, um, the ego will dupe us into like giving away the power and then we can't access it. So what are the major ways? The first way you'll catch yourself in the act of residing in the powerlessness instead of the truth is complaining. Every time we complain, we are verifying the problem. We are verifying our powerlessness against the problem. Oh, I can't believe I have to blah, 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 blah. Or um, why does this thing keep happening? It just stinks. Anything you're complaining about is where you feel powerless. So catch yourself in the act and just pause. Wait a minute. And the complainer that's part of the ego mind program is going to be like, yeah, but I really do have to do this. Yeah, but I really don't have a choice. Yeah, but it really is because of blah, blah, blah. Complaining. So if I knew I was an infinite being having a physical experience and I was infinitely powerful, wise, creative, having that source energy come through me, what would I have to complain about? Right? It's only where I don't know that. And so even if you're like, yeah, that sounds good, Kim, but that's not my experience. What if you paused on letting yourself get away with complaining and just started to see it? Huh, there I am complaining. What is it I think is true where I'm powerless? What is it I think is true where I don't get to have it? Because then you got to have an outlet for it. And complaining is perfect outlet. Oh, let me just get some of this energy off. I'm so miffed. I'm so frustrated. I'm so blah, blah, blah. Or complaining about a person. All of it is going to uh, ground and strengthen powerlessness. Okay, Cassia, great to see. What do you recommend when someone's in uh, chronic fatigue syndrome crash. We're going to move into that. I can lose the weight. Good. Uh, <laughs> trauma from childhood. Recovering alcoholic, 40 years sober. Bravo, Betty. Thank you. Uh, anxiety, fear of nerve pain symptoms, ears ringing, SI joint pain. Good. All right. Well, thank you. So, Let's say you have this SI joint pain and it's like, huh, I wonder what's going on here. Body, what do you need? And you stayed in an open space to let some awareness come in. It might not come in in the first 10 seconds, but you stay open because you know, like I'm a giant receiver, constantly receiving billions of bits of information. Let me open instead of close. But what we do instead is, oh my gosh, I have this pain again. Can you believe? I thought it was better. I, I did this and then I did this and it's still here. Complaining is going to validate where I'm powerless or stuck or broken. So it'll be like a pseudo release, but not actually change things. So it'll be like a temporary, oh, like venting, right? I got to vent it. Oh, ha. And that's like our outlet to do that, but it doesn't actually create lasting change. The second thing that might be a little bit harder to take right now, we make it wrong. Now I know, how could we not make it wrong that I'm in excruciating pain 25 hours a day? What are you talking about, bitch? <laughs> And I have all the compassion in the world for how challenging it is to say, I'm going to take full responsibility for what's happening in my life. It is a big ask. It is a bold ask. It is the ninja move. It is not the light and fluffy. Everything happens for a reason. It is the freaking down and dirty. Oh my God, this is real. To ask myself to meet the depth of, what is showing up in my life and take full responsibility. But as soon as I make it wrong, this shouldn't be happening. Uh, I, I shouldn't have to deal with this. Or you're telling me I created this. Why would I do that? Right? You have to deflect. You make it wrong. You make it wrong. You make yourself wrong. The more you make it, the circumstance wrong and make yourself wrong, the more you lose your power. You can't access your full power 
and be doing the making the thing wrong. So for example, I mean, it's like a Chinese proverb where the guy, you know, the farmer, um, let me think how this works. I think I'm going to have to look it up because it's such a specific thing, but it's spoken to me. Um, uh, it's about uh, luck. The guy's like, you know, oh, you're so lucky that this happened. Oh, you're so lucky that that happened. And he says, really? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, I'm not going to find it that easily. Okay. Anyway, basically, uh, his uh, his horse, you know, breaks a leg and this is how they make their money and they have, you know, take the, till the fields and all his neighbors, oh, you poor thing, you poor thing. This is terrible. <gasps> That's awful. He said, well, maybe, maybe not. And then what happened was, uh, oh, let me think of each step. You know, each thing ends up coming back being a blessing. <laughs> And then he ends up getting an additional horse, you know, in addition or uh, something happened. Oh, let me find it. I'm really mucking this one up, aren't I? His son, I think it was his, his horse ran away. His horse ran away. And then they found the horse and it came back with three other horses. And they said, oh, how lucky. You're so lucky. You're so fortunate. He said, maybe, maybe not. Um. Um, and then basically his son is out riding the horse and falls off the horse and breaks his leg. That's what happened. And all the neighbors are like, you're so unfortunate. Oh, how terrible for you. You're so unlucky. Maybe, maybe not. And then the Chinese guards come and say, we're at war. We're taking all the able-bodied men. We're here for your son. And the son hobbles out on his broken leg and they can't take him and it spares his life and he doesn't have to go off to war. Oh, you're so fortunate. You're so lucky. What would it take for me to receive what's happening in my life as a gift, even though it looks like a freaking curse when it first happens, or even though it looks like a curse through the lens I'm looking? What if I would take 100% responsibility for what's happening and say, okay, if my higher self is creating all of this, Clearly, you're not consciously creating an illness or consciously creating your circumstance that is unwanted. But if my higher self and some part of me is creating this and having this show up in my life, what kind of genius is running the show here that I think it's a disaster, but what could the gift actually be that has me, let's say, okay, I know a lot of people who've gotten sick and hated their work and it finally had them like leave a job they didn't want and something else amazing came in that like build their heart. Um, having had people, I mean, Jessica is a great example. I mentioned her earlier about having had severe, severe Lyme disease almost on death's door. If you ask her today, the greatest thing that ever happened was that fallout because the old self died. She was people pleasing. She was living for everyone else. She was, I've got to achieve. I've got to achieve pushing, pushing herself through life. And now she's living in full alignment with honoring her true self. How is this a gift? How is this happening to sort of actually kill the not me? So what lives is the true me. How can I receive this quote, unwanted experience? It's only unwanted from the small self who thinks, I should never have this happen. This is wrong. Um, but what if I receive it from the true self? What if I don't make it wrong and just welcome what is? That's when I actually have my power. The power to do something else. You can't have that power to create magnificence and create it differently if you're still making what got created wrong because that you suppress your power, right? Uh, so that's kind of the second thing. Yes, accepting responsibility for my own stuff has taken years and I'm still having to consciously interrupt the pattern that give my power away. Life-changing, love you so much. Oh. To oversimplify, can ch thank you for that person, just says Facebook, so I don't know who, who said that. Lucy, can to oversimplify, can changing perspective affect our direction 100%. And this is, if you wanna make it the bumper sticker version, change your perspective and change your reality. And we're kind of like doing a deep dive on it's not all airy, fairy, fluffy, buffy to actually freaking do that. It's pretty mega to ask yourself, 
to assume full responsibility for what's showing up in your life. Because if you still have judgment and complaining and you still have wrongness and shame, oh my God, that's going to hit so hard. That's when it happens. Like you're telling me I'm responsible for my cancer and chronic fatigue syndrome. And no, I have fought this. I have done everything. I have tried so hard. And what they hear is like, it's making me wrong if I assume full responsibility, which is why I wanted to sort of slow down today and really appreciate with immense compassion. That is not what I'm saying at all. If we take the wrongness out, then it's just an experience, right? Wow, this part of me has been, you know, maybe I didn't believe I deserved to have a great life. So I stayed in that job for 20 years longer than I should have thinking I'll never find anything else. I have to do it this way because there is no other way I could possibly survive if I don't keep in this job. And then we kind of like torture ourselves. But what if I assume responsibility not 20 years ago, here now, in this moment, right? You're not, you're not responsible for what's happened in your past. What if you jump in right here, right now and say, all right, guys, I'm here. Let's see what's going on. I'm jumping in. I'm going to claim full responsibility so that I have full power for what happens here forward. Simple. Don't need to make yourself wrong. You don't need to make what's happening wrong. You can jump in and say yes. When you're a yes, you have power. Yes, it's so hard when you don't feel safe. Oh, I was thinking, I was about to start an ER residency in a brutal program and my body said, nope, along COVID. Maybe it was a blessing. Um, I would just say if it was not resonating for you, it was not the right path and something way bigger and way more powerful will open up. Remembering Eden, I'm literally having to do that now. It showed me how burnt out I was and out of alignment. So could, yeah, could you receive that? And because it's always your wisdom trying to show you something. All right. The next one is arguing for the limitation. Well, yeah, I could do that, but I know she's just going to say blah, 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 blah. Or yeah, I could leave my job, but then I know it's never going to work and I can't do anything else. And I have to do this because this is how the world works and this is what is, and I can't do that. Wait a minute. Are you arguing for the limitation? Because when life sparks and gives us a ding, 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 and you're like, whoa, I want to have what she's having. Oh, yeah, no, no, I can't have that because for me, this doesn't work and that doesn't work and this goes this way. Argue for the limitation. Who's doing the arguing? It's the ego. It's the program. It's not the true you. I will definitely tell you that. So you may catch yourself in the act of complaining. You may catch yourself in the act of making what's happening wrong as opposed to receiving it. You may catch yourself in the act of arguing for the limitation. I, I have people in my life who've um, really gotten very good at this. Sorry, my light just went out there. <laughs> and it's hysterical how they'll come to me and be like, hey, Kim, can you help me with this? Or, hey, Kim, I know you talked about this, but, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then they they want me to help them argue for the limitation. They want me to help them find their way out of it by like bringing up all the limitations and then like, let's sort through them. Can't do that because you're feeding the limitation. You're feeding the lie. You're feeding the BS belief system. So you can't feed it and like have something else at the same time. So this will look like well, yeah, the mind and body are connected and the body heals itself and form follows structure. Yeah, 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 quantum physics, whatever. But I have a physical diagnosis or but I require medication, but I have a genetic disorder. And you have like a whole slew of um, reasons why this higher universal principle of truth just really doesn't apply to me. Great. You can keep your limitations alive as long as you want to keep your limitations alive. And you'll keep living them as if they are true. But at the end of the day, they're not true. They're not true. You can live them as if they are true, but they're not absolutely actually true. So do you catch yourself arguing for the limitation? And it might actually sound even more sneaky, like, but I just don't understand. Or, well, I'm confused. And these are all ways of like, let's stay in the mind and keep trying to figure it out because I don't want to actually just drop in to where universal source will handle it for me. <laughs> Alyssa, 
Ha ha, you're such a good example of not remembering the story. Yeah. 55 years old from Slovenia. Oh, I just lost it. Oh. Um, diagnosed two years ago with PPMS. Is it possible to heal and how? Your body that, you know, the, the wisdom that created your body is absolutely capable of healing whatever is happening in your body. Yes. Um, I have had so much of this coming up the last few days, Malva. Glad I have your tools to use and glad to be in embracing health. Me too. <laughs> um, all right, hold on. Let me just keep reading through these comments so I stay out of the conclusion. Yes, every time you argue for limitation, you're going to hear your own conclusions, right? Well, yeah, but how do I do that if blah, 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 blah? How do I do that if I'm feeding three kids and we're all dependent on my income? I mean, how do I just like leave my job and just let that go? So you can argue, right? You're creating this context of, this is this. Here's what I can do. Here's what's possible. Here's what's not. And then you're trying to create universal, all new possibilities from within that box. That can't be done. And you can keep proving to yourself over and over and over that it can't be done as a way to say, see, she's wrong. And I'm right that I'm stuck. And I'm right that I can't have it. And you can be right all day long for 27 lifetimes. Or you can just kind of get curious of like, is any of this actually true? Hmm. What if all of my conclusions are creating the limitation? And what if I were to start slowly just letting them go? What else might be possible? Because the universe, the world as it shows up, the circumstances, and yes, your body are a reflection of the consciousness you are in. We've seen this with decades and decades of research in psychoneuroimmunology that like, whoa, your hormones are like going to respond to your own thoughts, beliefs, perspectives. Your immune system is going to either be strengthened or weakened, totally depending on the level of fear you're embodying. Uh, your digestive system is going to either be like, boom, I could eat a horse and I'm fine or like totally shut down. I have to just sustain on a few grains of rice. I can't tolerate anything else. Depending on your own being. So yeah, there's childhood trauma and who am I in relationship to that? Am I still in that fear and I haven't fully found the compassion for these parts of myself or these circumstances I've been in? I'm still making it wrong and trying to avoid it. I still feel broken. I'm still trying to therapize and medicate because it's this bad thing versus, wait a minute, how could I let in more resilience that digests this? and lets it dissolve so it's no longer part of my system. This thing that happened 40 years ago doesn't have to be alive anymore today. Okay, so you find that's the third piece. The last one, which is kind of, um, I think, pretty easy to catch ourselves in the act of, is blame. We blame others. We blame that I had this incident or you don't know my situation. Oh, yes, that makes sense. But you don't know my husband. I mean, this guy's just not going to budge. That's the way we strengthen our powerlessness. It's the way we strengthen the false um, paradigm, the false situation, the situation where, yeah, but I can't have this. And yeah, but it's not right, right? So blame well, this thing that happened to me when I was three, and so therefore I'm always going to be broken. I see so many you guys, even like really prominent leaders doing amazing work, but they're still hanging on to that story, identity, self, right? Like I had, in all the compassion in the world, they don't, you don't need to move through it before you're ready to move through it. You don't. But you also don't need to hold on to it any longer than you need to hold on to it. So what if you're no longer, hey, I had this uh, disease or this thing and, you know, I'm, I'm going to show you how you can overcome this too, but they actually haven't let it go because people have said, oh, are you still in remission from your autoimmune disease? And it's like, I, what autoimmune disease? <laughs> you don't have to make it a reality. It's not. It's not a reality. It's just a faulty way of perceiving that brings things into the physical. And your whole body is going to be a representation of that. So what if you let go of who I thought I was and everything that's in the past? What if you let go of, but 
because of this person, right? Like, well, because my boss, husband, child, money, blah, 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 is this, I can't have that. Because my XYZ situation I'm blaming does it this way, therefore I'll never really be free. So it's not about, I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying, hmm, catch yourself in the act of giving away your power. Catch yourself in the act of feeding the dragon you're trying to overcome. Yeah, yam, yamani yama. How true that we can create. No victimhood. We're co-creators. Remembering Eden. Wow, a faulty way of perception that brings things into the physical. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yes. All right. Hold on. Let me look over here. I have MCS. Oh man. I complain about other people using fragrance. <laughs> yes. Fragrances. Oh my gosh. And stuff all the time. And my life has been so small because of it. So multiple chemical sensitivity, the immune system is basically like, <gasps> is something going to attack me? Super hyper alert. And then like, you know, the artificial toxins that they put in perfumes and like cleaning solutions and whatever, and your, the system's like, <gasps> right? Super, super sensitive. We're all have some sensitivity to that, but somewhat multiple chem chemical sensitivity could be like, <gasps> I can't even hardly breathe. I had a really powerful experience with this when I started doing this process we're talking about today. What if I don't make it wrong, right? Because I had so much on it. This disgusting stuff. This is toxic. This should be illegal that they put this in products and think, you know, it's just okay to give everybody cancer with these carcinogenic substances in the freaking like room freshener. Like, really? Are we not getting that this is not okay? So I was like, fired up. If I were to look at the time, I didn't look until I did. <laughs> and you get conscious of like, what am I holding on this? where I'm pissed this stuff exists and I'm pissed at this person for freaking spraying it. Is this person an idiot? Are they clueless? Oh, wait a minute. If I take 100% responsibility for my experience, why would I have had this thing show up in my experience to irritate and trigger the crap out of me? Oh, I'm ready to awaken to what I'm doing that's creating the sensitivity, which is actually reactivity. Nothing wrong with sensitivity. It's the reactivity of ah! that the nervous system and the immune system clamps down into when I'm exposed to those chemicals. It's not a conscious process, right? Because you don't even know you walk by some toxic fumes from some guy's truck. Your body knows though, and it's listening. And these programs were there. So I had to look at like, where am I making everybody else wrong? And where am I doing victim and blaming that I'm so powerless, I have to be subjected to this toxic environment and I'm so irritated about it and layers, like a lot. I cleared it, I took full responsibility. Like what if I could be a total peace with that the world is as it is right now? So that's the only way I actually have power to let the world show up differently, to create it differently. But, geez, you can make yourself wrong for that all day. You're saying it's my fault he's wearing this toxic perfume. You're saying it's my fault they're creating toxic carcinogenic substances. Right? You can play that game. Nope. When you take 100% responsibility for 100% of your experience, you don't get to do that shit. You don't get to hide behind victim and that story. Right? So just play with it. Little go super gentle with yourself, you guys. I know this is big, 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 super, super bold stuff. It's a huge ask. It is a huge ask to ask yourself to look at the deeper layers of pain you've been protecting yourself from. And some of them are like so freaking unthinkable. Traumas and assaults and like, you know, major, major unspeakable things. And you're like, whoa. But if you let that energy move through, it's no longer part of your system. So let the indignance of whatever this is uh, move through because then you get more resilience. And that's definitely what happened to me. I was so indignant of like everyone spraying this and that. And, and then I decided like, yeah, what if I let that go now to the mind that is like, but then I'll be so vulnerable. 
I'll be exposed to everyone's toxins and I won't even be protecting myself. Protecting yourself from them is not actually helping you. It's actually inflaming you. Taking your power back actually lets something else show up. Massive, unthinkable change. So try it on. Receiving a CFS crash feels like a punishment. That's part of the equation, right? I'm being punished. Why is this happening to me? Versus let me be receptive. What is happening? What is needed? Because in that space of receptivity, I have power. In the space of making it wrong, what you resist persists. You're in resistance. And it's your resistance, your closure, your tension that creates more of the problem. Okay, so those are the four things, right? Complain. You're going to catch yourself in the act of complaining. Now, you're not going to try to make anything better. You're just going to go, oh, sweet self. I love you. There you are complaining. I love you. I love you. I love you, right? Compassion. Making it wrong. This shouldn't be happening. Why, you know, how do I fix this? Um, why me? I'm having a crash and oh, I'm being punished, right? Oh, now I get at first it's like, how could this not be wrong? Just soften a little bit like, what if this isn't wrong? And let it in. Let in everything that brings up. Uh, arguing. Yeah, but you don't know my plight. Oh, well, you don't know my husband. Or yeah, but I have a real issue, right? Oh, wait a minute. What if I stop doing that, which is actually just a mechanism to validate how challenging this really has been for me, how alone I've felt, how powerlessness and frustrated this has been. But you don't need to keep arguing and blaming, blaming the situation, blaming your past, blaming others. So you catch yourself in the act and you make a shift. Uh, how does the energy move through? Breath. You're always breathing anyway. And sometimes you can just do a little bit of conscious breathing, right? Like, I can't believe Kim just said it's my fault. What a freaking witch. <laughs> and you're like, oh, my God, this is my ego trying to protect me by like making the other person wrong. What if I just breathe? So soften your body, physically soften. Energy wants to move and it's always moving in some way. It just, if it's blocked, it will, it'll feel like tight and painful. If you soften your body, the energy will move through as it's designed to. Oh, Cassie, I feel so blessed to have joined Embracing Health 2022. Thank you for your wisdom and guidance. Isabella. Lisa, Lisa, me too, Cassia. Patty, Kim, do you believe that a condition that keeps reappearing every year at the same time, chronic diarrhea, could be conditional, conditioned deep in the subconscious mind? 100% yes. What if I don't get to the root cause? It's not about, so that's the ego that asks the question. What if I don't get to the root cause? What if you asked instead, what would it take for this to resolve? Now, an issue that's coming up seasonal could very likely be linked to like seasonal allergens or seasonal, you know, who knows what's happening seasonally, <clears throat> seasonal, um, even sometimes when there's like an event, I know this light is not great, an event that happened, it can trigger those um, emotions and chemicals associated with that event. Like if someone died and there was a loss, we kind of cycle through those energies again. It doesn't matter. When we allow more harmony in the immune system, the inflammatory markers go down, the cortisol levels go down. So instead of, like I said, with multiple chemical sensitivity, where the immune system's like primed on the edge of like, <gasps> where's the allergen? And then reacts to the smallest thing. It's like ah! massive flood of immune modulation, massive flood of immune reaction. When you resolve what's in your inner being, who you're being, um, that seasonal thing, like you, you, you may not be at all primed against that. So it's not that it's not this external thing stimulating it. It's that your system's primed to react to that. Uh, these are the things you can change. And they're not 2% of the equation. They're like 99.9999% of the equation. So most of what we see, it looks like the stuff. It's actually pure energy. Okay. Um, does an acupuncture? Yes, acupuncture helps move energy, opens up the meridian channels. There's a million things. Like it's not, I'm not saying it's just breath. Breath, 
softening the body, take an Epsom salt bath. I do this all the time. Um, even certain ways of communicating, like if you find yourself in the complain, do instead uh, what I call the swamp. You like clean out the swamp. There's an exercise in my YouTube channel called the swamp exercise. And I just uploaded for everyone who's in the uh, Embracing Health, I uploaded a new version of this in the Embracing Health program and it's awesome. But there's a basic brief one in my YouTube channel of like, how do I let out the venting? I got a vent. What's a really healthy way to vent instead of buying into my powerlessness? That's a great exercise to move energy. Okay, so these are the four things. And the last thing I wanted to complete with today which really changed my life powerfully. It's in a course I'm doing with a guy named Greg Paul called Law for Mankind, which is all about like universal law and how that's like the foundation of our true life. What is universal law? Everything he's teaching is like the exactly, exactly verbatim of what I have found to be true in the field of medicine, right? Because universal law is universal law. He's applying it more in the space of... Um, how we conduct our lives law. And I'm, you know, in setting people free and I've been conducting this in the space of healing and health. It's the same thing. And the really mind blowing way he laid this out, you guys, was, you know, there's four dimensions we meet of taking full responsibility for our lives. The first one is we begin becoming aware of what others are doing to others, like the shit that's happening in the world. And there's this and there's that. And can you believe this is happening? And it's uh, going to bring up a level of pain to realize like, oh, my God, what's actually going on that I really didn't realize and never fully acknowledged. But like, how do I deal with this? Okay, that's the first level beneath that is what others are doing to me or what others have done to me, right? Like when I was five, I got this assault or trauma or my parents did this and this and that. And that's a whole other depth of pain and a whole other depth of density in our own system to deal with, to meet, to transmute, to take responsibility for. Like that's a bigger ask. Like, whoa, it's one thing about what's happening out there, but like, this thing happened to me. The next level is what I am doing to myself. So you think about like, wow, I've sat in a cubicle for 20 years, hating the job I'm in, but like telling myself there's no other option. You have to do this. Not believing that I could actually have real value and I have to keep doing this thing I hate. You know, we're like torturing ourselves. We're putting ourselves in jail and making all kinds of reasons why we can't get out oh my gosh, you mean I did that to myself? So we look at that next level of taking. So I stayed in relationships that I maybe was abused or maybe just really wasn't happy and told myself, no, you've got to make this work. So you look at that next layer. And then the bottom of these four layers, the bottom deepest one is um, what I have done to others. And this for me opened the whole freaking floodgates on the most challenging relationship in my life, relationships, because it's a couple of nuggets in there that God gave me to like really wake me the fuck up from victimhood. Like you are creating the challenge in your life. And I started to realize that in these relationships, I was showing up knowing what this other person did to me and really being resentful about it, complaining, making it wrong that I got treated this way, the whole, the whole gamut. And I realized like, oh my gosh, I know what it's like to call yourself on out on the shit you're doing to others. It, there can be so much shame and judgment and wrongness that of course you protect yourself from that and you defend. No, I only did it because blah, 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 blah. So you like justify it or no, you're wrong. That's not how it happened. You defend or you um, deny. No, 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 you're wrong. I didn't do that. <laughs> Uh, because you don't actually want to meet the shit you've done to others. Because if you're judging yourself or making it wrong, you're going to feel the shame. And, and that's just too much for most people. So you have to like, no, 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 no. You deserved that. I should do that. Okay. So if I'm going to take responsibility, 100% responsibility for my life, I've got to look at that like, oh my gosh, I, I totally did do that. But if I'm not making it wrong, I'm not blaming myself, I'm not in judgment, I can move through that, right? There's enough love. There's enough forgiveness. Ho'oponopono. I love you. 
I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. This is the ultimate of I'm taking full responsibility for my life. You can't do it without this premise. <laughs> I have a video on this in my YouTube as well if you want to go deeper, but Ho'oponopono is one of the most powerful methodologies for showing up in your life in full receivership, in full power. I take full responsibility for what's happening in my life. Okay, so I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. Use it as a mantra because you're going to start to see like, Oh my God, I did do that. And tell yourself, I love you. It's okay. It's okay this happened. It's okay she's pissed at you. It's okay she's calling out your bullshit and crap you've done that you didn't want to admit to that you actually think is so despicable. You don't even want to see it yourself. But if you want to heal your life 100%, this is where you need to go. 100%. And so I did. I realize, like, I'm asking this person to look at the shit they've done to me because I'm like, why are you treating me like this? Am I willing myself to go to my fourth level and look at what I've done to others? Yeah, I am that committed. I am that willing. I am 100% committed to cleaning up 100% of my life. And I didn't get there till I got there. So, like, don't push yourself. Like I said in the beginning, it is a big freaking ask. But if you weren't making yourself wrong, you weren't judging and are, you know, making it, uh, making complaining and blaming yourself, could you receive like, all right, there's some part of me that didn't think I really deserved to have an awesome relationship. So I did it that way for a long time. And I'm ready to own that. When you own it, you've already changed it. When you own it and you receive it, you've already let it change. That's what transmutation is. And I experienced massive, massive, unthinkable change in one of my main relationships in my life that is blowing me away on a daily basis because I did this. I realized like I'm asking that person to meet their fourth level and <laughs> it can only be done here. What if I meet my fourth level, that level of what I'm doing to others, what I have done to others? And I'm willing to see it and receive it fully. It changed everything. It gave me the power and it let my relationship be created totally differently. And I know it will also let everything in my life be created totally differently because the reason that relationship showed up for me is for me to change me, for me to get out of the resistance, any little nugget of resistance I was in and be in more freedom. Massive. All right. I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I hope this is useful and helpful and empowering. We are all awakening. I'm at drkimd.com. We have amazing, powerful online courses. You can start with the book, The Mind Body Toolkit. There's a video course that goes with that. That's at drkimd.com forward slash book. The next bump up is the Instant Elevation Program, also a home study course you do in your own timing. Really, really powerful tools and brings you deeper into what we have been discussing here to transmute those energies, to use the three functions of your energy body where you are a receiver, you are a transmitter, you are a transmuter, you are a creator. Are you activating that? Are you consciously engaging that? And it helps you like move through the density that can come up with that very fluidly and smoothly. So the Instant Elevation Program is at drkimd.com forward slash IEP if you would like to check that out. Jessica and Alicia are mind-body mentors who have been mentoring with me for years and years and years and are absolutely incredible at assisting others in integrating this work. So one one-on-one -on -one session, people have even reported it's not just me saying it, it's like decades and decades and decades of like doing your healing work on your own. I would highly recommend working with one of the mind body mentors if this work is really resonating with you and you're like, ding, 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 ding. I'm ready for that. I'm ready for that level of responsibility. I'm ready for that level of power. I'm ready for that level of opening. That is at drkimd.com forward slash mentors. Um, stay tuned for more. I'm here every Wednesday for Mind Body TV at uh, Dr. Kim Duramo in YouTube and in the Mind Body community in Facebook. If you're in Facebook, join us in the Mind Body community. That is where the conversation continues. Um, also, subscribe. Subscribe in YouTube. Hit the like for sure because 
that will help other people find this content, which can change the world in about 20 minutes altogether. People are awakening. It's really just a matter of igniting that. Hit the like, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell if you'd like to know when I go live and when we post a new video. Um, thank you guys for being here. I love you. I'm so grateful we're doing this. It makes me more alive as well. Um, keep me posted and share your comments. I will see them over the next uh, over the next bit here. Um, actually, whenever you comment on them. I get those posts. So if you're listening to the recording, hello to you as well. And thank you for being here. Lots of love. Bye.